an army of around a thousand warriors fought on the banks of the river Tollens in northern Germany about 3,000 years ago. They were armed with weapons of bronze and what was left behind was a massacre. Archaeologists have unearthed the skeletal remains of hundreds of people buried in the marshy soil. It is one of the largest prehistoric conflicts ever discovered. In a new genetic study of the remains, scientists have revealed something rather startling about these early European diets, which has profound implications on many views held about how this particular gene was passed on. What they discovered is that these soldiers could not digest fresh milk. Let's find out why this is such a big deal. Researchers attempted to piece together the events of the battle and an initial assumption was that the warring factions may have had different ethnic backgrounds. So they proceeded to sequence the DNA of some of the skeletal remains. What they discovered, however, was that these soldiers all seemed to hail from Central Europe, what we would consider today as Germany, Poland and the Czech Republic. Their genetic similarities did not offer them an insight into why they fought each other. One of the things they did discover was that two of the skeletons were women, and this suggested a more complex scene than the archaeologists had reconstructed. They also discovered that none of the warriors had the genetic mutation that allowed adults to digest milk. This ability is known as lactase persistence, and that's common in many Europeans. So why is this such a big deal? Previous studies have shown that lactase persistence was common in parts of Germany by 500 AD, and widespread across the region by 1000 AD. This means that the gene must have spread before this time, but after the battle just 2000 years earlier. This means that within just a hundred generations, the mutation had penetrated populations across Europe, and this is the strongest selection found in the human genome. So these findings only deepen the mystery of lactase persistence. Previously, a study conducted by Berger in 2007 had shown that the first European farmers living more than 8,000 years ago were not lactase tolerant. At the time, he had argued that the mutation gradually spreads along with the development of agriculture and herding, a theory supported by signs of milking and cheese and yogurt making in Stone Age Europe. The argument went that people who were able to digest milk will be able to get more calories from the herd than those without, and more of their children would survive to pass on the gene. But the Talent skeletons show that at least 6,000 more years went by before the gene for lactase persistence caught on. The DNA results also quash the theory that this gene was imported into Western Europe at about 5,000 BC by cow herding nomads from modern day Ukraine and Russia. These results leave scientists more puzzled than ever about exactly when and why Europeans began to drink milk. Natural genetic drift cannot explain it. The scientists admit that it's almost embarrassing that this is the strongest example of selection we have, and we can't really explain it. We have to find a reason why you need to drink this milk. So why am I covering this story? Well, I do believe that this is a piece of the puzzle. It is something that sticks out as not fitting into a narrative. To me, there are three interesting points to this story. Why did we develop a tolerance to drinking milk? How could this selective gene be passed on in such a short period of time? And what was actually going on at this battle? Let's start with point three first. The scene is one of thousands of warriors, not small clans clashing. This was a brutal battle fought with clubs, spears, swords and knives, as well as bow and arrows. There were horses involved as well, crumpled and speared to death. Some warriors were struck from behind, possibly indicating that they were fleeing the scene. The battle seems to have taken place across a three-mile stretch of the river. Now, so far, they have uncovered about 130 bodies and five horses, but they have only excavated about 3-4% to of the site. But the bodies reveal no heel marks, indicating that what they have uncovered happened in a single day. Why they gathered at this spot is another mystery. It may have occurred around a long bridge crossing point. It is also believed that Northern Europe at this time was devoid of towns or even small villages. 
Instead, most lived in farmsteads with a population density of fewer than 5 per square kilometer. Analysis of the remains from the battle reveals chemical traces that suggest most of the warriors came from hundreds of kilometers away. The range of these isotopes was large, which indicated that they came from a lot of different places. What is more, many of the skeletal remains reveal heel trauma from earlier fights, including three skulls with healed fractures. What is the significance of finding women at these scenes as well? Were these also warriors, or is this whole scene being interpreted through a preconceived lens of what we expect these people to look like? In order for this gene to have been passed on in such a short period of time requires, in my mind, a need for this. If they had survived without this gene prior to this, something must have changed, meaning that this became a bigger advantage. Now one obvious link that you can make is that of population density. The closer we start living together, the more land you require to create produce to feed those people. Could milking of herds be a more efficient way of storing calories compared to other methods? I'm not sure. There are many examples of large cities existing before this time, like in 7000 BC we have Jericho, which is thought to have a population of around 1000, and then there's Uruk in Iraq, which is thought to have a population of 45,000. And these all predate this, so they could happily survive without the requirement for this gene. So what's a some aspect of Europe that forced this to become an important gene to survive? One aspect of milk is that it can be turned into cheese, which can last a very long time and stores many calories. I think this may well be a clue to the events that shaped Europe in the not too distant past and may also be a link to the idea of cyclic disasters that I have covered in the Earth in Upheaval series. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.